You're welcome. We want to look at uh, practice questions on the mainland, so, sir. Uh, so we start with the first question. An IS auditor planning and audit engagement should be primarily concerned about A, documentation of the accounting and internal control systems, B, selecting the most qualified team members, C, clarifying the audit scope, D, understanding the business process. So out of the four, which one should be the primary concern of an IS auditor when uh, he or she is planning the audit engagement? Of course. Uh, documentation of the accounting and internal control systems is very important. All right, uh, select, selecting qualified team members is also important. Clarifying the audit scope uh, is very, very important. But in, in planning, what is our primary concern? We want to understand the business process so that we can focus on areas of highest risk. So in this case, D is our best answer. Let's look at question two. I ask all the professionals to demonstrate organizational independence by A, not collecting material gifts from the IT management, being conscious of possibilities for fraud and irregularities in the course of the audit, C, getting the required skills and competence for audit engagement, D, not permitting self review. So, what this question is asking about is uh, whether we understand the meaning of organizational independence or not. Now, organizational independence means that the editor should not review his or her own work. You should not allow yourself to be put in a position where you are auditing yourself. So definitely D is the answer, not permitting self-review. Not collecting material gifts from auditing, that's professional independence. Being conscious of possibilities of fraud and irregularity because of the audit, that's professional skepticism, all right? Getting the required skills and competence for audit engagement, so that has to do with uh, competence. Okay, so the best answer here is definitely D. Question three, the risk that should first be understood by IS auditor is A, control risk, B, ER risk, C, detection risk, D, financial statement risk. Okay, so out of the four, which one of them? Control risk is the risk that controls set by the audit report. Near risk is the risk that comes with the process, that comes with the application, which is just natural to the business uh, entity or the industry. Detection risk is the risk that the editor will make a wrong conclusion because of an action taken wrongly or inaction. Okay, the financial statement risk is the combination of inherent risk. So the first risk, the editor should be concerned about is the near risk because near risk cannot be understood if you don't understand the business process. So it's in understanding the business processes, you start understanding the threats, the risk, the vulnerabilities that go with that particular industry. So the best answer here is uh, B. Near risk. Okay, we look at question four. Business risk can have a direct impact on detection risk to a cost. A, C, B, first. What is business risk? Business risk is the risk that can impede the achievement of business objectives. For example, technology development can render the technology being used within the organization obsolete. Okay, it's a business risk. New regulatory or pronouncements, all right, may hinder the operations of the business. All right, so can we have impact on detection risk? The answer is yes, too. Because business risk can create situations that can uh, threaten uh, the going concern of the business. And if the auditor did not put those issues in the course of the audit, the detection risk has a cost. Like I said, that could be a new regulation that can threaten the existence of the business. So if the auditors, you know, review the processes, all right, they already report, and they did not take note of that connection. So you discover that one month, one year after the business is to exist, it calls a limitation imposed by that law. Then the question will be, what did the auditor do? So question four is definitely A, too. 
Okay, the equation so far. A nice editor reviewing an SPAS system to be primarily concerned about irregularities in the A knowledge base, B inference engine, C explanation model, D user, user interface. Of course, the answer is the knowledge base. The knowledge of the expert is encoded into the knowledge base. The inference engine is used for processing. Explanation model is used for explaining to the user right, uh, the, the rules that the system used to arrive at conclusion. Right? The, of course, user interface is used to engage by the user to engage uh, with the uh, SPAS system. So the most important aspect of an SPAS system is definitely the knowledge base. So the answer is A.